So I think a lot of you already know that the X chromosome is on the uh, female's eggs and then that the they, that men uh, carry the uh, X and a Y sperm. So they have X sperm and Y sperm. There's actually a process of spermatogenesis where they develop together and then they split off. So if an X sperm fertilizes the X egg, then supposedly the chromosomal pattern will be that that's supposed to create a girl. And an XY chromosomal pattern, a Y sperm, uh, fertilizing the egg, then we would get a, supposedly it's supposed to be the setup for a boy. So the way that you can remember that is there's a Y in boy, so XY. So this is some a little extra stuff that I think is interesting to share with you that didn't come out of the book. Uh, but I, I think you would probably enjoy learning this. So the sperm actually have certain characteristics. And um, I don't know, have you guys ever heard that silly joke that says something like, um, Okay, if the man is on top, you're more likely to get a boy, and if the woman's on top, you're more likely to get a girl, and if you do a doggy style, then you get something like puppies. Ah, no, so silly. But anyway, could the position that you do have sex in have any role in determining the sex of the baby? Uh, the answer is actually yes. And you say, oh, Amy, come on now. We, we, we believed in you and now you're starting to let us down here. But what I'd like you to know is that the sperm has different characteristics. And it's pretty interesting here. I want to share it with you. So the X sperm is more like the tortoise. So let's look at this tortoise. Um, I want you to imagine that tortoise even a little bit bigger than that rabbit. So the X sperm has more information on it. We'll see why that is in a little bit, but the X sperm actually has to carry more information. So it's bigger. So if it's bigger, it's heavier. And if it's bigger and heavier, what are tortoises known for? They're known for being slow, right? But then um, there's another thing that tortoises are known for, and that's living a long time. I mean, think about it. How would you kill a tortoise? I, I don't know how you would kill a tortoise because if you, you know, you I, I don't know. You'd have to kill him maybe by poisoning or something like that. So uh, it's very difficult to kill a tortoise. They, they live long times. They tend to be pretty healthy. So now let's see about this hair. So let's contrast the little the Y sperm with this. Okay, so the Y sperm. Uh, sorry about this. Is uh, smaller. So picture the tortoise as being that great big tortoise, uh, a great big tortoise, like the ones that are two feet around. Um, and picture the rabbit as just like a little, little rabbit that's probably less than a foot long. Smaller. Okay, so they're lighter. And, but they are faster. But we know that it's relatively easy to kill a rabbit right? See the tortoises, they can just pull their head in and they can just turn into a great big glob of shell. But the rabbits, they're much easier to kill. So um, we'll just say shorter lifespan. And in general, they're just not quite as hardy as the x -sperm. So they just are not as strong as the x -sperm. You can imagine that. So the x are stronger. So now knowing that information, um, let's talk about this position thing and is there anything you can do to increase your odds of having a certain baby? So this is a scientific approach called Shuttle's approach and it is uh, supposedly 80% accurate. But I don't know if you guys have been listening and I have five boys and the reason why I have five boys is because I kept trying because I really wanted a girl. So. I tested this out and um, didn't quite work for me, but that's okay. Um, I think something that we might find in the future is that 
certain women's bodies, the way our uterus is shaped, maybe the way our vagina is shaped, maybe the acids in our vagina. Uh, in, the, in certain cultures, they believe the food that you eat may influence the sperm. I think that, that women may have a role in uh, determining the gender of the baby. They like to say that men do, uh, but I, I think in the future we're going to find that women have a role in it as well. But let's just talk about this little approach anyway. So what we're going to find out is we're going to find out that uh, in your textbook they talk about it as the, um, the ovulation day. They call it the periovulatory time period. So for this example, we're going to talk about ovulation as uh, day 14. That's what a lot of a lot of textbooks are going to use about day 14. So if it's day 14, then what's day 1? So day 1 would be the first day of her menstrual cycle. And supposedly the time period when she is most likely to conceive is around day 14. So now knowing this information here, could we use that information to improve our odds of getting a, a little girl baby or a boy baby? So first of all, um, do you guys know which baby is much more likely to be conceived through artificial insemination? It's actually boy babies because look, if we have sex on day 14, which which animal is going to win the race? It's going to be the hare in most cases, right? So when you're doing artificial insemination, they're waiting for ovulation to occur. And a lot of times, the uh, more times, more often, you get boy babies out of artificial insemination. Now, uh, for those of you that are interested, if, I don't know, would you pick the sex of your baby? Um... So you could pay approximately three to four thousand dollars, and they can spin the sperm. So why don't you guys tell me? Why don't I'm not going to tell you the answer. Why don't you think about it? If I put the sperm into a centrifuge and it spins it, so that will separate the weights. How would they do that? They they can artificially inseminate you to try to get you with about eighty nine percent accuracy, this sex or that sex. Can you figure out what they would do? Okay, so if you wanted a girl, then they would take the sperm from the bottom, right? Because the X sperm are heavier. And then if you wanted a boy sperm, they'd take the sperm that's more at the top, and they would artificially inseminate you. Okay, so you say, all right, Amy, we kind of understand that. So, so let's just look. If you were going to try to improve your odds of getting a little girl, what day would you have sex on? So we know day 14, ovulation time would be a uh, boy, but what day would I have sex on to try to get a girl? It would be day 12. Okay, get it? So you say, hmm, why? Because the X sperm is slower to get up there, so it gets up there, travels up there. By the time the egg is released, the Y sperm have died. See, the vagina is very hostile, very acidic, actually. And the Y sperm, remember, it's not quite as strong as the X sperm. So it gets up there. The egg is released on day 14. It's ready and weighted, and we can fertilize the egg. So we can see that the days, well, you say, well, I kind of understand that, but you said the position, and we want to believe in you, Amy. All right, well, let's just use science here. If the woman is on top, which baby might she be more likely to have? I think she would be more likely to have a boy because, no, it's not just me thinking this, okay, this is a whole approach, this is a scientific approach, okay, so don't, don't just think, oh, Amy's crazy here. Look, the Y sperm, look, if the woman's on top, which one is going to fall out? It would be the X sperm. The Y sperm would be more likely to get up there because these are heavier. Whereas if the woman is on the bottom with her butt slightly raised up, and the sperm is not as likely to come out of the vagina, it's likely to stay in the vagina, then you have a more of a probability of getting a girl. Okay, so along with this approach, there's other things that they take into consideration as far as douching, for example. If you wanted a, a boy, you're supposed to 
douche with uh, baking soda and water. And what douching is, is putting a fluid up in your vagina. And the baking soda is supposed to buffer the acidity of the vagina. So it's supposed to help the Y sperm get up in there. And then the uh, if you wanted a girl, you're supposed to douche with vinegar and water because that makes it more acidic. So the Y sperm are not as easy to, not, not will not have as easy of a time to get up there. But anyway, um, I think uh, I just wanted to share this with you because I think a lot of people don't know about it and it's fascinating to think about the sperm. There's so much interesting information out there that like that the sperm can live inside of you for 72, uh, 72 hours, these different characteristics of the sperm. But I'll stop there and now what we're going to go on to is we're going to go on to organizing effects and I think we're getting to one of the most interesting portions of this chapter um, and I can't wait to share it with you.